Welcome in to the Illini cast, Austin Berkland alongside Sonny Verma, and we're going to get down and dirty on our Sweet 16 opponent, the Iowa State Cyclones, and we have Alec Bussey joining us from Cyclone Alert, the 24-7 affiliate of for the Iowa State Cyclones, and Alec, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks guys for having me on. Uh, certainly a lot going on right now in everyone's world in the college basketball space, but uh, yeah, certainly happy to join you. I'd Before we me, get going, I mean, how is it being a being in the Illini circle and then uh, writing for Iowa State and having this as the matchup? It's got to be pretty cool seeing both sides of your your previous life and your current life uh, going back and forth. Yeah, it's certainly going to be interesting. Uh, graduated from Illinois in 2022, um, so certainly familiar with a lot of the people in Illinois program. Try and keep up with them as much as possible. Watch them. Um, I've gone to a couple games this year. I uh, went to the Bragging Rights game, went to the FDU game in Champaign right before the new year. So it's interesting to be able to cover two teams that you kind of feel like you're more or less an expert on. Um, really makes it easy for me to do all of, like the scouting report stuff. Um, and, you know, on our message boards, people have already been asking me questions about Illinois personnel and different things like that. So it's really easy for me to not have to look anything up and just kind of have it all off of the top of my head. So it'll be a lot of fun um, being out in Boston this week and being able to uh, get back into Brad Underwood press conferences, listen to some of the Illini players that um, were there when I was there. So it'll be a lot of fun. Not sure where Austin went, but uh, when that bracket came out, were you immediately, did you just kind of like circle it and be like, oh, this could uh, potentially happen? Uh, I think my initial reaction was, oh, that's cool. They're both going to Omaha together and I'll be able to watch <laughs> Illinois play in Omaha as well as Iowa State. And then I think it hit me. It was like, oh, that means they can play in the Sweet 16. That might not be something I want to have happen. To be honest, I was telling a lot of people in Omaha this past week, I was like, I don't really want them to play. Yeah. Um, just because it's kind of weird. It's kind of awkward and uncomfortable, um, especially, you know, working for a fan site like I like Cyclone Alert and 24-7 where you've got message boards and people, you know, they don't want you to be rooting for the other team. And I'm certainly not. Like, I do my best to be an objective, non-biased journalist, all of those things. Um, but I think a lot of people are going to feel like inherently that those feelings are there for me. Um, I will do my absolute best to make sure that they're not and be objective and cover it and, you know, just kind of call it how I see it, which I think I do a really good job of that uh, most of the time. So it'll be a lot of fun for sure. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, you know, I was really excited once uh, it was confirmed that uh, Illinois was going to advance, which you kind of got the feeling of about three minutes into the game against Duquesne, uh, you know, your name definitely popped up as one of the ones that I wanted to kind of reach out to for Iowa State content, just because I know you've been doing it for a while now and you kind of have a familiarity. So the questions I may ask, you know, I'm not coming from a point of perspective that I know much about Iowa State. And so like I hear w cliche words like, you know, there's gonna be a clash of styles and whatnot, but you can actually kind of flesh it out for me a little bit. So I'm really glad uh, for you coming on. I know you're gonna have a super busy week. So let's not waste any time, Alec, if you don't mind. Usually how we start these previews off is to kind of give Illini fans an idea of what the Iowa State expectations were coming into the season. Like, uh, were you hoping to make it a Sweet 16 uh, beyond this? Uh, is this season coming out of nowhere? Uh, can you kind of let us know? Yeah, I think it's all dependent on who you were coming into the year. Um, Coach Otzelberger has kind of talked a little bit about um, in different times and national media stuff with different people. Um, one of the different opinions he's kind of shared and kind of said is that he didn't think that this team would be as good as they have been. Um, now, I think the fan base certainly had a lot of, um, you know, excited expectations entering the season just because of, you know, some of the recruits that they had coming in, two top 50 recruits, including a five-star um, and Omaha Baloo, who quite frankly, like doesn't even play. He's really not in the rotation at all. Um, so I think that those things kind of naturally raised the expectations for the fan base. And then also, you know, you're returning Taman Lipsy, who um, as a freshman struggled to shoot it, but was really, really good everywhere else um, for Iowa State at the point guard position. And then they just returned some other key pieces like Rob Jones in the front court, Hassan Ward in the front court, and Trey King, um, who was able to get eligible last year after uh, first semester, he had to sit out that first semester after transfer. He was a multi-time transfer. Um, he returned as well at the forward position. So I think fans' expectations were maybe a little bit higher than what the coaching staff was. Um, I think that everyone kind of thought that a that a NCAA tournament would be possible for this group. 
Uh, I don't know how many people thought winning a Big 12 tournament title and achieving a number two seed would be possible for this group when you think back to October 1 or September 1 when practices were really beginning to start. Austin, I think you're on mute. <laughs> Can't hear you. I think you still are. Yeah. All right, Austin, I'll get the next question. Um, uh, you're still on mute. Sorry. Uh, okay, so now, you know, obviously you guys had a very successful um, performance in the Big 12 tournament with a really dominant win over Houston. Give us a, you know, a kind of a synopsis, uh, I guess you can say, of what the strengths and weaknesses of this team are. Yeah, so... Um... All of their strengths start on the defensive side of the court. Um, if you look at Kempom, they've been one of the top two or three defensive teams in the entire country. You mentioned uh, Iowa State beating Houston. They actually did that twice this year. They did it in Ames um, in January, and then they did it in the Big 12 tournament title game. And the way they did it in the Big 12 tournament title game was, I mean, it was an embarrassment for Houston. that They lost by 29 points. Um, and at that point, after the game, Iowa State's defense jumped up to number one in Kempom's defensive efficiency ratings. You know, it's since fallen back down to number two, but it's one of the top two or three defenses in the country. Offensively, a lot of what they do is predicated on getting their guards into the paint. They want to get Taman Lipsy. They want to get Keyshawn Gilbert into the paint. Um, and they really try and do that out of transition. And they're able to do that really effectively because they force a ton of turnovers. Um, Illini fans will probably remember the defense that Illinois played when Brad Underwood first got to Champaign where there was a lot of ball pressure. They were trying to force a lot of turnovers and, and get deflections in passing lanes. That's a lot of what Iowa State does um, in terms of trying to force turnovers. They're second in the country in turnover rate. Um, they're top five in the country in defensive steal rate. Those are both really, really impressive things. Now, the downside to that defensively is you leave the three-point line open a little bit. Um, and, and that is where they've been hurt a few different times this year. They lost by 15 on the road at BYU early in the Big 12 season. Um, Baylor hurt them in the regular season as well. And when teams shoot it well against them, they can kind of struggle. But because of how much ball pressure they put on opposing teams' guards, it, it just makes them really, really uncomfortable. And they rotate really well. They play so hard defensively. Um, and it's really a lot of fun to watch if you're someone who likes defensive basketball. So going to Coach Otzelberger, what has been his bread and butter in terms of finding talent and how has he grown Iowa state into being a number two seed in the NCAA tournament, winning the big 12, what has been his skill set in building that Iowa state program up? Yeah. So he's got a really interesting kind of career path. If you kind of look at it, he was an assistant coach three different times at Iowa state all the way back under Greg McDermott, who's obviously now the head coach at Creighton was an assistant under Fred Hoiberg at, um, here at Iowa State, and Hoiberg's obviously now at Nebraska, and then he was also an assistant under Steve Prohm, um, who also won a Big 12 tournament title, and then kind of that flamed out horribly at the end of Steve Prohm's tenure, and now he's back at Murray State. But during his three different stints on Iowa State's assistant staff, I think he got a really good understanding of how to be successful at Iowa State and what it takes to be successful at Iowa State, while also becoming really aware of the challenges um, that the Cyclones face just kind of as like an overall athletic department. It's not, it's not a program um, that is super well-funded in terms of financial resources, especially in the NIL space. Uh, but they have done a really good job of just building an identity of toughness and accountability and, and all those different things. And they often talk about daily habits. Um, Illinois fans always hear Brad Underwood talk about like everyday guys. For Iowa State, it's our daily habits. And what those daily habits really consist of is just their culture and everything they do. Um, they play really hard. Um, they pride themselves on being the aggressor. They want to be the tougher team. They want to be the team that plays harder um, and, and really asserts themselves every single time they step out onto the court. So I think from that perspective, because I know that's what Brad Underwood really prides himself on with, you know, talking about diving on the floor for loose balls and getting loose rebounds. And um, I think back to some of his comments after they lost to Purdue and Champaign and how angry he was that they didn't get any of those loose balls in the last couple of minutes um, that's a lot of how TJ Otzelberger would handle that stuff as well. Um, and I think a lot of coaches are that way, but that's really, really true with, with this Iowa state team because they don't have some of the upper level talent that Illinois might have. They don't have a Terrence Shannon on their roster. 
Um, I don't know if there's an NBA player on this Iowa State roster. Um, Milan Momsilovic is a freshman. He averaged about 11 points a game, I think, this year. He can maybe get there. He's really skilled offensively as a former top 50 overall recruit. Uh, but he's not a great athlete. So there's questions about his ability to translate that to the defensive end at the next level and different things along those lines. Um, but yeah, he's done a really good job of finding players that are willing to buy into his system, buy into the way that he wants to play here. And the connection that he has with his players in the roster is really, really incredible. Everyone is always on the same page and everyone is fully aware of what the daily goals are and what the daily habits um, need to be to achieve those goals. Now, it sounds like these two coaches uh, share a lot of similarities, uh, at least on the sidelines, but the 10 guys on the court, stylistically, uh, not so much. Is it, am I being lazy when I say that this is just going to be a real, like, you know, a style like of clashes and whichever style wins out, wins the game? Or do you think Iowa State, you know, has it in them to kind of play a little bit more offensive and, you know, try to keep up with Illinois and, you know, just saying passively, I know you do watch Illinois a little bit, you know, their defense, the numbers don't look great, but individually uh, in certain games, at least as of late, the they've been performing better do you think it's you know kind of where they can kind of meet in the middle somewhere I think it's a styles make fight kind of game to be honest with you um I certainly agree with what you're saying regarding Illinois individual defenders being better like Terrence has been really good especially on the ball um you know obviously Coleman has had success when he hasn't had to defend um Biggs who can score it in the paint and you know Ty Rogers has the potential to be a good defender but overall like you said their defense has been poor for you know, the better part of two months. Whereas Iowa State, their offense went through a massive, massive slump um, after losing on the road at Houston on February 19th, I think it was. Um, between, I think, February 19th and then the last day of the regular season, a loss at Kansas State. They went four and one um, in those five games um, or four and two in the last six games. But their offensive efficiency rating within that time fell outside of the top 100. Now their defense was number one in the country. So that's what allowed them to kind of have so much success at that time. Um, but since since then, they've kind of come around. In the Big 12 tournament, they beat Kansas State handily. They put up 76 points that night. Um, they put up 76 the next night against Baylor. And then, like I said earlier, I mean, they blasted Houston and beat them 69-41. to 41, I think the final score was. Um, and I'm sure a lot of Illinois fans watched this uh, Washington State game. Started out ugly. Um, yeah. We're trailing 7 to nothing at one point in that game. Um, and they won 67 to 56. So offensively, they're challenged. They don't have a ton of great, um, you know, individual like bucket getters, but they have enough guys. Like no one on this team is going to be able to consistently go get you 20, but you've got four or five guys who can probably consistently give you 12 to 15. Um, when you think about Taman Lipsy and Keyshawn Gilbert and, um, you know, Milan Momsilovic, I would certainly include in that group. And then off the bench, Curtis Jones is someone who's really productive for them as a shooter, making about 33, 34% of his triples on the year. He, um, he's a really good key piece for them coming off of the bench. So they have enough guys to make shots. And in the non-conference, they did a really good job of posting a lot of points, but they didn't play anyone quality in the non-conference really. Um, so I think that that kind of inflated some of their offensive numbers early in the year. But yeah, it, it, I do get the vibe of this is a Styles make fight kind of game. And I think a lot of times, those are really fun to watch for fans. Since you have some history with Illinois and seeing them play, what do you think Iowa State's defensive strategy will be against guys like Marcus Damask and Terrence Shannon Jr.? Yeah, it's a really good question. So I think what makes Iowa State's defense so impressive to me is that they don't change what they do, like ever. Uh, it doesn't matter who they're playing. It doesn't matter the opposing team's personnel. They're going to blitz every single ball screen. They're going to trap ball screens. They're going to try and push the ball um, closer to half court. Now, Illinois doesn't run a ton of ball screen actions, um, especially compared to like the 2021 team, the 2022 team, those two teams that had um, Kofi Coburn. And it's a lot more ISO ball now than it was before. Sorry, my mom's calling me. Um, but I'm yeah, it's, it's a lot more ISO ball than it was in the past. So I think it'll be really interesting to see how Iowa State kind of goes about handling those different things because – a lot of times teams run ball screens and that kind of like plays into what Iowa State wants to do because then they can blitz it and they can trap it and they can do different things like that. And that leads to them being able to force turnovers. Uh, but they do also at the same time, such a great job of keeping opponents out of the paint. 
And what is led Illinois' offense to being so successful a lot of times this season? It's Terrence Shannon getting into the paint. It's um, Marcus Damas getting into booty ball and being able to get to that mid-range fadeaway that he likes a lot. So I, I think it'll be really interesting to see, you know, who is successful in that manner. I do think there are questionable matchups for Iowa State individually from a defensive standpoint if they do want to go one-on-one coverage. Um, their guards aren't very big. Taman Lipsy is 6'3 at the most. Oh, he's strong. He's physical. Um, you know, Keyshawn Gilbert is a little bit taller. He's probably 6'3 or 6'4, but he's not as physical as Damon Lipsy is. So if one of those two guys gets stuck guarding Terrence Shannon, um, they could they could struggle. Um, same with Marcus Damas, just because of the size that those guys have um, and the advantage that those guys have. But again, they do such a good job of clogging driving lanes and keeping teams out of the paint. So I almost question, like, how does Illinois get to the things that they've done so well this year? But then at the same time, like, no one has stopped Terrence getting to the rim because of how good and how athletic and quick he is. So it'll be a really interesting um, development to for me to kind of follow, I think, for someone who knows so much about the two teams. So let's turn it to the other side of the court. Um, again, you know, Illinois' defensive prowess this year has been kind of a roller coaster ride. Uh, you know, started off uh, up top, you know, uh, at least high in the efficiency ratings, and we kind of tanked as soon as the calendar turned to January 1st, and it's kind of been slowly uh, rising up again as of late. If you're Iowa State, how do you attack the Illinois uh, on the defensive side? So that's a really good question, too. <laughs> um, I would say it does so much about trying to get the ball into the paint offensively as well. They want to get their guards into the paint. And one thing that I think Illinois has struggled with this season is honestly just like guarding the ball at times. Like they've had um, individual guys struggle to keep the ball in front, keep um, ball handlers from getting into the paint. So I think Terrence will be really big in this game because he's been their best on ball defender. And I'm really intrigued to see who guards who in the Iowa state backcourt, because Terrence will definitely be on either Taman Lipsy or Keyshawn Gilbert. I think Gilbert's more of the one that's wired to score. He's a little bit of a better athlete than Taman Lipsy is. Um, but at the same time, Taman is more of like the creator and the table setter for the rest of the offense. So does Ty Rogers play against Taman or does Marcus go on Taman? Um, and then coming off the bench for Illinois, how does Justin Harmon do against those two guys? He struggled as an on-ball defender of late, in my opinion. Um, so it'll be really interesting to, I think, see how well they do about keeping the ball out of the paint. And if, if Illinois can do that, I think that they'll really struggle, I would say, will to score. Um, but the thing is, like I said, I, I think Illinois struggled to do that um, for the better part of the last couple of weeks and couple of months. Uh, but another thing is, I mean, this isn't an Iowa State team that has has a ton of loaded shooters. So, you know, Illinois wants teams to shoot three or to take tough twos. This is an Iowa State offense that if you look at their shot charts, they take a lot of mid-range twos. Um, now, Milan Momsilovic, he'll take them and he'll make them. He's, he's a pretty effective shooter. Um, don't know how much you guys have watched of him. He kind of reminds me of Dirk. Um, he's got like a little old school game, good footwork, good fundamental shot, um, all those things. That I think a lot of Illinois fans will really appreciate watching him if they haven't yet. So that'll be a really interesting matchup as well. And I think it'll be um, fascinating to me to see how Brad Underwood kind of counteracts that because he is such a good tough two shot maker, but Illinois wants to force teams into that. So it's a, it's kind of just an interesting conundrum, I think. Who do you think is the dark horse player on this Iowa State team that can cause havoc for Illinois? Say your top two guys, uh, Keyshawn Gilbert and Taman Lipsy, are having some struggles. Who's the guy that Illinois fans are going to be like, this guy is beating us offensively? Um, how is this possible? So who would who would you be who would be the guy that would be the dark horse uh, that would keep Iowa State in the game if those two top guys are struggling? Yeah, I think certainly Momsilovich would factor into that group um, just because he's been um, so important for them. He was an all Big 12 freshman team member this year. He went through a really long shooting slump. That was about a month long, but he's really responded here um, since the Big 12 tournament semifinals. So that's certainly a name to keep an eye on. Curtis Jones, like I said earlier, making about 33, 34% of his threes. That's one um, as well. Trey King, he's a forward. He's a six, seven. He's really strong, really physical. Um, he's had games this year where he's lit it up from three. He was really successful against Kansas um, from beyond the arc. I think he had four threes that day. 
Um, he was really good on the road at Houston and Iowa State's loss to the Cougars from beyond the arc. And then he was also good at UCF um, in a late season, regular season game there. So those are a couple names. I don't think that Iowa State um, – goes to Hassan Ward enough. He's a six foot ten, six foot eleven, really athletic big. I think they should put him in a lot more ball screens with either Gilbert or Lipsy personally. Um, but they don't post him or Robert Jones up very much. So I don't think that that's like a terribly difficult matchup for Coleman Hawkins because neither one of those guys is averaging um more than seven or eight points a game this year. Alex, thank you so much again for your time. Uh, we'll kind of wrap it up with a couple more questions real quick. Uh, by the way, if you're watching this, please, we're so close to 500 subscribers. Do us a favor, hit that like button, uh, hit that subscribe button. It really helps uh, channels like ours out. Alex, I'm just curious, like with Illinois, you know, fans, like we had this big stigma about not being able to make it into the second season. And now that with that victory, the resounding victory over Duquesne, a lot of fans on our end at least kind of feel like the rest of the tournament is kind of like a free roll. What's the mindset of the Cyclones fan base? Like, is this also kind of a, you know, officially a successful season or are the expectations, Hey, let's, let's keep going. Let's win another game here and, you know, take on potentially UConn on Saturday or, or like, are people going to be disappointed or what do you think? I think it'll be natural disappointment if they lose, but I also think that there's a quality understanding that, that this was a great season, no matter what happens on Thursday night, to be honest. Um, if, if Iowa State wins, they're going to advance to the Elite Eight. Um, I would have to go back and look at the last time that Iowa State qualified for the Elite Eight. Um, they were in the Sweet 16 just two years ago during Otzelberger's first season. But that was a little bit more of a fluke. Um, I think they were an 11 seed. They went 7-11 and 11 in the Big 12 that year. This year's team, you know, they finished second in the Big 12. Um, in my opinion, they were the second best team in the Big 12. So th it's a team that I think the fan base has fallen in love with, and it'll be really sad to see the run end, um, whether that's with confetti falling on Monday night or um, on Thursday night to Illinois. So I think that that's kind of how I would view it. I think that they also you know, view this season, no matter how it ends, as an ultimate success because you know they didn't make it to a Sweet 16. They did win a Big 12 tournament title, and those are really important things for Iowa State and I don't know about you guys but I'm of the opinion that like if you're not a Duke a, a Kansas or a Kentucky or North Carolina you know getting to a sweet 16 like if, assuming it's not like a magical run to a sweet 16 NC State has kind of had right like that was kind of out of nowhere that like you probably had a really good year like I, I think if Illinois does lose on Thursday at Iowa State like their fans should remember the season really positively they finished second in the Big Ten they won a Big Ten tournament title they made it to a Sweet 16 they were a three seed like that's a really good year for for a lot of programs um so yeah I think it's I think that's kind of how how Iowa State fans do it it's probably fairly similar um to Illinois fans I like final question for you I I don't want to step on any prediction columns that you have but where are you leaning in terms of this matchup between Iowa State and Illinois? It's a really good question. Um, I think that these are two really evenly matched teams. Um, if you look at the metrics, they're very, very close to each other. They've been really close to each other for a really long time. Um, I do think Iowa State's the better team. I've kind of felt that way for a while. Um, and a lot of that is just because their defense is insane. <laughs> like, I've never seen a team this consistently guard the way they do in person. Now, maybe I would say the same thing about Illinois. If I watch them in person every single night, like I did last night when they beat Duquesne, um, that like seeing them up close and like in on with a courtside media press row seat, I was like, damn, this offense is a lot better than it looks on TV. Like Terrence Shannon is impossible to stop. Like he's a lot faster in person than he is on television. I, I, I think Iowa state wins. Um, if the game is, in the 60s or the 70s um but if the game gets above you know 78 80 points i think that iowa state could struggle to win so i think that that's how i would view it like i said i think i give iowa state a slight advantage just because i think their defense is insane but um there's certain reasons for illinois fans to be really um you know excited about certain matchup advantages that i think that their offense is going to find it's just about whether or not they're able to execute against the ball pressure and the havoc that Iowa State's defense really creates. Alex, Regardless, it should be a fun game. Did they release a time yet for the game on Thursday? 
I haven't seen one yet. I think they, it comes they out have someday. not. I think they're releasing all those times whenever all the matchups are set. Got it. Okay, sounds good. But uh, Alex, think or Alex sorry thank you so much again for joining us today I know today's gonna be not just today this week is gonna be super busy for you so I'm glad we got to squeeze this in before the rush really started uh, if you don't mind just uh tell our Illini cast and crew uh where they can find you online yeah check me out on Twitter um or x if that's what you're calling it don't know what you guys prefer to go by <laughs> um so yeah look at look for me there at Alec underscore Botsy that's b-u-s-s-e um, if you want to read any of my work, um, they'll be free stories as well as VIP stories um, going up at Cyclone Alert. That's Iowa State's 24-7 website. Um, so, yeah, I mean, make sure to check me out there. And then I know I'm going to be going around a few other Illinois shows and pods this week. So if you follow me on Twitter, you'll probably be able to see some of the links to those to hear me preview Iowa State and maybe hear me uh, spew a little bit more of some opinionated things about the matchup this week. Alec, thank you for your time and have a great week and have a great trip to Boston covering this unbelievable uh, Eastern region. Thanks, Austin. Appreciate it. Before I go, go cards. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no. Got to no, edit no. that one out. <laughs> How do you get it in there before? I mean, I have fun finishing last in the NL Central. Let's see how. Wait, I'm not positive. I'm not feeling good about the pitching. I've already decided if they're, if they're bad this year that I'm just going to spend a lot of time on the golf course. So that's how you I know, I just noticed that up. opening day is also the day of uh, on Thursday. So that's going to be fun. It's going to be a full of sports uh, on my end, at least. Yeah, it'll be a good time. It'll be a good time. I probably won't be watching much baseball. I'll be watching <laughs> on, uh, on the college draft, but I think like most Americans, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> thank you again, Alec. Alec thank you again and uh, enjoy the t- trip to Boston. Thanks, guys. Have a great rest of the week. That was yeah. Alec Busty of Iowa of Cyclone Alert, the Iowa State 24-7 um, website. Uh, Sonny, we have a big matchup Thursday. Um, shall we do the prediction right now, or should we hold off on that? <laughs> Let's hold off. Let me watch a little bit more Iowa State tape a little bit, uh, try to figure out a little bit more about the team. It's still a little early. We still have a couple of days. Yeah, we'll have, a po- we'll have another podcast by the time this matchup happens. So, Sonny um we'll get to watching some iowa state tape and we'll figure we'll figure out our feelings uh but as of now ill i and i and we are on the sweet 16 can't believe it this has been an episode of the illini cast part of the big banter podcast network